Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are going to see the parameters and the return values. So, what are parameters? So, the variable defined at the um, time of function declaration are called parameters, and the variables which are defined at the time of the function calling are called arguments. So, basically, there are five types of arguments present in Python. So, the we'll see each one of them. So, the first one is the positional argument. Then we'll see. First, we'll define a function then we'll give the function uh, name that person and then we are going to take uh, we are going to take two variables f name and l name and now we are going to print print the first name And then we are going to print the last name. And now, when we'll call our function, and we know how to call our function, just simply writing the name with the parenthesis, and we have taken two parameters, as you can see, f name and n name. So, what we have to do, we have to give here two values. So, first we'll give that our first name is Python, and our last name is coding. So when we'll execute our code, then at first name Python is getting printed and at last name coding is getting printed. But what happens when we don't remember this position? So uh, suppose we'll write coding at first and then Python. So it will you will see that the values has interchanged from these earlier the first name was python and the last name was coding now when we write python at the first place uh, coding as the sorry coding as the first place and python at the second place so you will see that the values that get interchanged this is because because of this position you will see here that f name is present at the first place and l name is present at the second place so whatever the value present at the first place will be stored in this f name means this coding is getting stored in this f name and then is f name is getting printed and this python is present at the second place so it is getting stored in this l name because of the position so it is checking the position so at first place there is f name and at first place here is coding so these two uh, these uh, this is the value and this is the parameter so this is going stored in this variable and then it is getting printed and then python is present at the second place and here at second place there is l name so this python is getting stored in this l name variable and then this variable l name is getting printed so i hope you have understood the position so we have to uh, remember the position or the sequence of the parameters which we have defined in our function and then only we can uh, we we should give our uh, values according to that sequence if we'll not follow that sequence, then what will happen? You will see here as our values are get interchanged. So our values will get interchanged. Okay. This was the positional argument. Now we'll see the default argument. So for default arguments, I'll use a function add and then I'll give two numbers, num1 and num2. And then I'm going to store the sum of num1 and num2 in a variable result and then i am simply going to print result okay and then i'll call the function add and i'll give 25 then again i'll call the function then i'll give 35 then i'm going to call 85 and i'll run the code and when I'll run the code, you will see that the answer is 7. Then the answer is 5 plus 3, that is 8. Then the answer is 8 plus 5, that is 13. So you will notice here that the value of this num2 each time is 5. So basically, I'm trying to say that when we know the value of the uh, of one of the or both our uh, parameters values, when we know the both parameters value by default so what we'll do we'll just initialize that value suppose in this case we know that the num2 value is um, 5 we know by, that by default so we doesn't need to write the 5 each time so what we just give it at once 
in the function declaration itself we have initialized the value of num2 uh, that is 5 and now we don't need to give the value uh, each time when we are calling the function when we'll call the function you will see that 13 the answer remains same so i'll now this time we want the sum of 9 plus 5 so we have initialized 5 by default and we are taking the value of num1 as 9 and now when we'll print it you will see 14 is getting printed now what will happen when i'll override the value of 5 means i'll give here 6 by default there is 5 but i'm giving a 6 now we'll see what will, what is going to happen so you will see the value has increased means that this 6 has been added to this 9 so once if we want to uh, update the value of the num2 so we can if we'll give the value of num2 here uh, here so it will take this value it will not take this 5 so i hope you have understood this now we'll see the keyword arguments so for keyword arguments what i will define a function for person 1 and that person one and then i'll give parameters that l name then i'll give age of that person so suppose there is a person and that person must have a first name last name and age and must have a phone so what we are going to do we'll just simply print each one of them so first we'll print the first name And then we'll give f name here. Then what we'll do, we'll just we'll do the smart work. We'll just copy paste it. Then we'll write mobile here. And then we'll give your phone number. Now at this what we are going to do, there is age. So we'll simply write age here. We'll write age here too. Then we'll change it L name. Now we'll see. Now this was all the values which we are going to print. Now we'll call our function that is person one. And this person has uh, suppose first name, last name, age, and mobile. So what we are going to do now, suppose, suppose that we don't remember this sequence means we have for we just know that these are the parameters present but we don't know at that in which sequence these are present means uh it can it could be that f name is will present at the last then last name is present at second last then mobile is present at this l name place and then age is present at this first place so we don't know but we know that if we'll not write in uh write it the values in uh, in a proper sequence so the values will get interchanged so for preventing from that what we are going to uh, do we can just simply use the keyword arguments means using the keyword you can put the value at the time of function calling itself so i'll show you how it can uh it can be done so at first we remember that there was a uh that there is a variable uh, named mobile so we'll just write mobile here and then initialize the value of mobile supposed to any phone number so we'll give this is our phone number then we remember that there was a last name so we'll just give l name and then we'll give the l name last name to coding and then we remember that there was a first name also so we'll give the first name to python and then at last we are going to give the age and age is supposed 25 and when we'll print it you will see it will print in proper proper sequence in the sequence we are printing it so it doesn't matter that what was the format we have written here uh, randomly these values could also be in randomly so i'll show you suppose this age is getting here but when we'll print the uh, execute the code again you see then that in our format it is not changing anything 
because of this because of using these keywords so these uh, this is the uses of the keyword argument that we can directly initialize the value of these variables at the time of function calling itself and and then in what sequence we want to print it it will print exactly the same as you want to print it so i hope you have understood this keyword argument now we are going to see this arbitrary positional argument this one now for that i'm going to check uh, i'm going to take uh, add function and sometimes what happens is earlier we'll see uh, we have seen in the in this uh, default argument what happens we have taken the add function and that we are only adding two uh, numbers suppose we don't know that how many numbers we are going to add and that in the number of uh, arguments that what what number of arguments we are going to take is not fixed so for that there is uh, there is the prevention the arbitrary positional argument and what happens here that using the asterisk sign we name our using the asterisk sign we name our uh, parameter and then what happens here we, we want to sum it so we'll just simply use a sum uh, function and then inside the sum function we'll give the our variable name num and then at the time of calling the function we can give as much as values we want to make the sum of and then when we'll execute the code so wait a second i'll clear this ha huh. now when we'll execute the code you will see the answer is 207 means you can give as many as numbers you want as many big numbers you want and it will make the sum and we have to take only one variable here that is num and it is doing all the work so because of this asterisk what is happening here that this num is getting converted into a tuple and these all elements are getting stored in this tuple num and then we are using the sum function to make the addition of all the elements present inside this tuple num and then that is getting added so this asterisk is mainly this asterisk is converting this num into a tuple and because of that tuple because of this num has converted into a tuple we can store as many as number we want and we can also print it using the for loop also so for i in you can say num and then you can print i and you will see here when you will print it you will see that each values will get printed so from starting from 2 3 4 ending to 2 3 4 so i hope you understood this now there is the arbitrary keyword argument so what happens in this we'll see so suppose we are taking fn a random function name and then then we are uh, giving using double asterisk a now what happens in this function uh, in this arbitrary keyword argument that it this double asterisk converts this a into a dictionary and this dictionary will store and as we know the dictionary store uh, the items in key value pairs the elements in key value pairs so this a will store the uh, items or the or values you can say in key value pairs so we can access that items by using the keys or the values or we can access both at the same time so we'll see how to do that so for we'll use the for loop for accessing items now we'll simply print i and at the function calling how we'll give the uh, how we'll declare the arguments so we have we are just we have to just give the keyword and then we have and then we are going to initialize the value suppose we are going to initialize the numbers equal to 56 then using the comma then suppose we are storing colors so we'll give colors then we'll give blue then there is for example there is some fruits so we are going to store that fruits and there is orange now there are three values with their keys and with their and their values also now we are printing those 
and now we are what we are doing using the for loop we are printing the items present in the dictionary a and when we'll execute our code we we'll, are going to see that our <coughs> our keywords along with the values are getting printed now we want that our values should get printed we don't need our keys so we'll use the dot value function and you will see that our values are getting printed now we want that only keys should get printed so we'll write keys here and you can see that only uh, keys are getting printed that are numbers colors and fruits so i hope you have understood this now we are moving to the return statement that how to use the return statement so basically uh, i'll show you with this add function that we are taking two values num1 and num2 and then uh, we'll store it in a result variable the addition of the num1 plus num2 and then we are simply going to return the result and then we'll call our function that is add and then we'll give two values so i'll give two four and when i'll execute the code you will see that code has been executed successfully but nothing gets printed Be why this is because we are using the return statement so what happens when we use the return statement that it only returns the result but it does not print the value so for printing the value what we have to do we can use two methods we can use this function calling inside the print function and then when we'll print it you will see the answer 6 has been printed or what we can do or we can store this a into a variable and then we can print that variable now you see here that this is also get executed now what we are going to do we want a hello to be printed uh, after this return means we want that we should print a hello so this is outside the function we have to take it inside the function and then we have to use the print also because we are using return and we'll when we'll execute the code we'll see the answer is six we are not getting hello this is why this is because we are uh, we are using the return statement so return statement does that that it terminates the line and it terminates the function means the return statements here saying that that all the operations has been performed and then we are returning result and after that nothing can be uh, printed or nothing can be uh, executed nothing no quotes after this will be get executed inside this function now outside this we can execute it suppose we want to print it so this is giving an error yeah obviously this will give an error but when we'll when we will use the print function for printing the result and then we can print then we can print a hello and then we don't need to print this extra print and you will see six and hello has get printed so this was all for this video thank you for watching the video